Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. This video, we're gonna talk about the UTC tack drop target and why three-dimensional targets are, well, they're just better. Now, three-dimensional shooting is a topic I've covered before. I covered it extensively in the series I did on critical anatomy. I did those three videos on the head, the high thoracic, and the, and the uh, pelvic region. Um, but this video is specifically about the target system I use and why I use it and what are the advantages to it and why you should probably look into using it or a system similar. Uh, I get questions about the UTC tack drop, which is the target I use all the time, and I figured I'd put a video out there so I can, you know, refer people directly to it. I actually did a video on this target system years ago, but it's so deep in the channel and my, my video skills weren't really great, so if you want to go watch it, you can, but it's pretty freshman level when it comes to production value and getting my point across. Uh, much more comfortable now speaking to the camera, speaking to the public. So what, why, I should say first, why use a three-dimensional target? Well, <clears throat> people are three-dimensional. I've talked about it before, you've probably heard me mention it before, but I use three-dimensional targets in every single class that I do that is live fire based. And my force and force classes, well, people are three-dimensional, so that serves the same purpose. Reason being is most of your targets, I'm sure you're familiar with this general shape, this humanoid form, IDPA shape, or whatever you wanna call it. I've got some critical zones that are kind of perforated in there. And this is great, but this is ideal presentation. This is your threat is squared to you, which is ideal. That's what I want if I can get it. Unfortunately, human beings are super unpredictable, especially when there's gunfire being exchanged or a threat of gunfire to be exchanged or basically a threat of injury or, or a life, loss of life in general. So they may not stay this way. If they do stay this way, this target is great for that kind of practice. But human beings have this nasty uh, feel, uh, habit of moving around. So if I wanted to simulate any kind of movement from this target at all, I can only do kind of unrealistic strafing. Uh, and if I start to work any angles in it at all, as you can see, the target is, for all intents and purposes, two-dimensional. I mean, technically it is three-dimensional because there is a bit of an edge there. But it's thinner than any human being is ever going to be. So I can't do realistic facing with this target. And I can't do a whole lot of realistic movement with it if I'm going to put it on a mover. Uh, so that's obviously a big problem. Why is it important to factor in a three-dimensional shape when you're when you're training and when you're practicing? Well, I guess the the, the best way I could say that is like I have already said, people are three-dimensional. But uh, even if you were to take a two-dimensional target and take a photograph of a less than ideal presentation of a threat, you know those photo targets where it shows the guy like that, or he's got a hostage, or whatever. Any cartographer or any, any kind of uh, 3D modeler will tell you it's infuriating to take something that's three dimensions and try to reduce it to two dimensions because there's going to be proportion distortions, which is something we don't want when we train because we're training our eyes as much as we are training our skill set on the gun or you know what specific focus we have that day. So for diagnostics, two dimensional targets are great. You know, put some diamonds, some squares, some numbers, some math equations on there, whatever your heuristic dogma may be. That's awesome if that's what you want to do. But when it's time to train, especially uh, more complex drill or scenario-based training for self-defense focus, actually working on putting holes in people, this is not the target I want to use. So this is the rear of the UTC tack drop target. You can order them separately. You can get these backs. These are the backers. Uh, this is the, the, the part you staple up first. If I wanted to do diagnostics before I got into more realistic drills or realistic uh, scenario-based uh, training, then this is great. I can go ahead and shoot this up, do whatever I need to do, mark my hits, put up different you know, pasters or whatever I'm gonna do. But once it's time to go 3D, uh, this is what you get. You go ahead and fold it in and it tabs right into the rear target. So if you've already shot up the rear, no big deal. Now you've got your three dimensional front. Uh, and from the angle I've got the camera placed at, you can kind of already see some of the advantages because while this target isn't a direct representation of the human form, it is a pretty realistic representation of a very thin person. Obviously, height is completely dependent on how you staple it. Most people staple targets about six inches taller than they are. Guys always put them up here when they're this high. It's just this thing that people do. That's why some people hang the art in their house too high. Total, totally different subject. So here we go. Now I have a three-dimensional form that I can use at will. Range is going to dictate just how realistic I can get with it. But just from a basic point of view, now I have the ability to practice on a three-dimensional form that's paper. I can paste it. I can mark my hits, take my time. If I shoot the front up, if I'm not doing really extreme changes, I can take the front off, throw another front on. As long as the back is still maintaining some kind of integrity, it's reusable multiple times. I can track my hits on the front. For me, I tend to replace front and back at the same time so I can track my bullet path so I know once I start working the, the angles as I'm gonna show you here in a second, uh, I can still track my exit grouping because my exit grouping may be just as important as my entrance grouping based on what I'm trying to line up, which in reality is I'm not shooting anything out here. I'm aiming for what's inside the target 
uh, a representation of human anatomy. So if this is my shoulder line, I've got a good thoracic region right here. I know where the heart's at. So I need to factor that into my point of aim as the target is turned towards me or I move around the target. Now here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is my high thoracic ideal presentation shot group. But then there's a shot group over there. What exactly is that? Well, that's the exact same thing as this, but they were delivered from two different angles. So this was ideal presentation, whereas this group was delivered when the target was faced eh, right about like that. So I'm shooting for the core of the body. I'm trying to hit the heart, the lungs, pulmonary arteries, pulmonary veins, all those really good things in there that don't react well to gunfire that help me stop my lethal threats. So I've got to be able to factor that into the way that I practice and the way that I train because I'm practicing and training for for realistic uh, self-defense which means it's probably going to be against a person and it's definitely going to be against something that is three dimensions um, why is three dimensions important well if you've never practiced it then the first time you practice it you'll understand immediately that two dimensions is not preparing you in the best way for the situations that you may face so this is another reason why i use these three-dimensional targets because if i were to try and this is something i see in classes pretty frequently uh, this is my best ideal presentation. Okay, I got my three-dimensional target. I'm shooting there, no big deal. But every now and then I get a student, usually one or two guys per class, sometimes more than that, sometimes less, sometimes none. Uh, but when we do our first 45 oblique or side presentation, they're still trying to shoot here. When in reality, they should have shifted their point of aim over here because they're aiming for those critical organs. If I try to hit here, no matter where I go, sort of bend the bullet around just to hit that ideal, that's a very two-dimensional mindset and a very I would consider that to be a significant training scar when it comes to shooting in three dimensions, is trying to maintain the same point of impact despite the target's presentation to you. There's a better view of what I was just talking about. There's my ideal presentation, high thoracic point of aim. But as the target's angle was changed to me, this is basically the viewpoint that I had from right here. So almost completely sideways. As you can see, it's roughly the same shot group. It's just moved to a more realistic point of aim, factoring in human anatomy, which is what I'm actually aiming at. Another cool thing that we can do with the UTC Tech Drop is they come with accessory kits, or I shouldn't say they come with them, you have to order them separately, but they're super reusable. Uh, they're arms, so I got a little knife that I can, I can give my bad guy. Uh, obviously, I can give him a gun, uh, and of course, spray paint can make these more realistic foam, things like that. You can kind of follow the outline, make the gun three-dimensional. And I can also just kind of tear that knife or that gun off and then just have an empty hand. And I can go ahead and put that on there. This could be a no-shoot. That could be a shoot, a different shoot. So I can start factoring in distance weapon. I can start having people do verbal commands. I get a whole lot of options from these uh, arms that I wouldn't normally have from two-dimensional targets. They're just not as versatile. Uh, and this gives me the ability to do judgment drills on the fly. I can change things out and factor that into the way that I'm running a class. If I'm doing a scenario-based situation where I want students to factor in using verbal commands or, or navigating a crowd or, or figuring out which one is the actual threat based on some kind of verbal audible stimulus, this is a great way to do that. And this is something I'm not going to get from a two-dimensional target unless I just, you know, paste up like the, the don't shoot me hands or spray paint a gun on the target. Is that functional? Does it work? Does it get the point across? Yeah, it does. But let's always be looking for better and more realistic ways to do things. Using multiple UTCs, you can really start to expand on the realistic nature of, or your diagnostics, your drills, and your scenarios. I, I've got four of them set up right now, which could simulate four threats. Uh, less likely than just one threat who's changing direction. Uh, if a threat is moving to the side, moving to the left, he's going to go ahead and do that whole sideways gang bang and gun shooting thing. Whatever the situation is, what this diagnostic forces you to do when you shoot is it forces you to engage multiple sight threats or multiple potential sight pictures on a moving threat, and it forces you to change your center mass, your desired center mass, on every single presentation. I've got ideal presentation, and then less so as the, uh, the target moves or as the targets are turned. Now, I can start the shooter at any one of these positions on this, force them to go from worst case to best case, or somewhere in the middle. There's a bunch of different ways you can play with this. You can also add in even more targets to make every single movement even smaller. It all depends on how much time you're gonna put into um, <clears throat> setting these things up. Well, this is just one thing I like to do. If you've been to a Sage class, you've probably shot this particular drill before, and you know how aggravating it can be because it's hard to, at first, transition from target to target and remember that you had, do have to, if you're going for those vital organs, make a small point of aim shift so your center mass is gonna go with that. The UTC tack drop is ideal for me when I wanna teach, teach students to start working angles and thinking about ideal presentation and worrying about 
is the backdrop to their threat clear? Have they cleared that angle? Have they done everything they can to create the best bullet path based on the situation context? So as we move just slightly, our rear threat is revealed to us. We've got a pretty clear line of sight, but depending on where I were to start the student at, they may have to work around. And in this situation, it would be ideal because the threat is at the back, but I can move these targets closer together. I can introduce more targets. I can do smaller targets, or I should say shorter targets, taller targets. I can put a bunch of no-shoots in there. I can put clothes on them to change the contrast of what they're looking at. <clears throat> no matter how I want to set it up, the world is pretty much your oyster. Your imagination is your only limitation when it comes to just how specific I can move these targets around to create the most realistic or the most frustratingly realistic uh, scenario possible. This is a really good situation to use for judgment shooting. Uh, the student doesn't get to see the target set up. They have to turn around or they have to enter a room or they have to, you know, take off a hood or however you want to do it. And then they have to process and deal with the situation in real time, forcing them to incorporate all those realistic skills such as movement, such as changing the angle of the shot, verbal commands, using barricades, using cover, using concealment, all based on the idea that the three-dimensional target is going to give us way more versatility than we're going to get from two-dimensional targets. Depending on how much time you have and uh, training aids you have to invest in creating scenarios and more realistic drills or diagnostics, you can create situations, pretty much anything you can think of in real life that has occurred or could occur can also be replicated with a three-dimensional target and force people to process the situation in real time. Setting up scenarios like this, especially for law enforcement classes or even for citizen self-defense classes, gives people, well, it forces them to use all their tools versus just focusing on uh, imagining situations because they can't actually replicate them with the target systems that they're using or based on, you know, sometimes range artificialities. Obviously, in this situation, shots would have to be taken into the deck. Target stands, you, you want to use the right kind of target stands for that. You want to set it up in a way that it's not going to create safety issues. But this is just a representation of things that you can do using a three-dimensional target system. Only Not only that, but <clears throat> again, your imagination is your only limitation when it comes to how you're going to set your targets up to be more realistic. Any way a human being can position their body, these targets can help represent that, at least in a way that's far more realistic than what you're going to get from two-dimensional paper. Of course, one of my favorite features of the UTC Tack Drop is actually in the name, Drop. If I were to take balloons and blow them up and tie them off and make some holes in the back of my target surface here, I can have balloons in the high thoracic or balloons in the head. When the bullets come through the front of the cardboard and hit those balloons, if they pop all or the only balloon you have in there, then the target drops. So I get that immediate reaction that we hardly ever get in traditional uh, live fire training classes where it forces the student to actually perform follow through instead of always talking about it. If your range allows shots in the deck because it's sand or it, it's uh, created in a way for more realistic angled shooting, uh, as some ranges are, especially heavy clay, uh, now I can have that target go to the deck and then the instructor can call, he's still getting up, he's still a threat, he's still got a knife or what have you, and force people to factor it, those things into him. The fact that the threat is three-dimensional, remember what I said, that moving center mass, always going for those vital organs. These are things you're just not going to get from two-dimensional targets. Of course, the argument can be made that, well, we've been using two-dimensional targets forever. And that's technically true, but it's also not true. Uh, the evolution of modern firearms training, or where we started to get our training uh, TTPs from, was from archery, because uh, that was a very similar system. Uh, archery traditionally used both two-dimensional and three-dimensional training for, for archers, both for close combat and then for artillery fire, they went more with the bullseye shape. Um, you, know, you look into the history of it, you find that two-dimensional targets are very, very... Uh, at least on a widespread uh, basis, very unique to firearms, as opposed to other systems where shit is, you know, things are fired like archery, because uh, that's where it came from. And we just got we got into two-dimensional targets because they're cheap and they're easy to set up, and because a lot of trainers throughout history either lacked the ability to be creative or they lacked creativity in general. So when we train for real life, we should try to be as realistic as possible. And I think at the very basic level, the very inception level of realism needs to include shooting on three-dimensional targets. Um, and that's definitely the reason why I incorporate it into every single class that I do, because I want people to walk away from a self-defense class with a better idea of processing the unique situations that three-dimensional targets create. So for those of you that were curious about the UTC tack drop target and were curious about why I was so big on three-dimensional and three-dimensional targets in general, in case you haven't caught it in one of my other videos, uh, I leave you with this. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.